my voice is weird. But I'm back. With Farah. She's such a badass. Okay. I said I would be back tomorrow. That wasn't... Well, I mean, technically tomorrow is like 3 a.m. But, uh... Yeah. This is the thing I'm doing. I'm doing a stream at 3 a.m. Why? Because I couldn't sleep. Also, because playing this game is such a better alternative to tossing and turning in your bed. Like, by far. <laughs> I'm trying to get chat working on my phone. <laughs> it's cold. Oh, I have to complete a captcha. Are you kidding me? What is this? <coughs> Oh, great. Coughing into the mic. That's really good. Um. <coughs> oh, jeez. Select all images with your apartment building. Oh, verify. Good. I have a bagel to tide me over in case I get hungry. Let's do this. All right, hold up. What's what, what's what's in what's in our journal? Maybe that's it. Inquisitor's path. The Inquisition's power grows. It gains enemies in equal measure. It will take an iron will to bring Thetis back from the brink of chaos, but that is precisely what must be done. Oh, okay. Haven. Haven once offered respite for pilgrims traveling to the Temple of Sacred Ashes, farther into the Frostback Mountains. If I'm being kind of quiet, it's because I don't want to wake anyone, because there are other people in this house, and, like, the last thing I want is for my mom to come downstairs and be like, what are you doing? It's late, or rather early. I was in the middle of saying a thing, but... Oh gosh, I need to wait. How far does this mic carry? If I go get up and get a blanket or like my sweatshirt, will it come with me? I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, blah, blah. Oh god. Okay. Alright, I'm tangled. I'm tangled up. I'm all tangled up. Okay. Undo the tangle. I'm gonna need that jacket. The jacket. Is the mic still working? Or if it's like, no, we lost connection. But we'll find out. <laughs> Imagine if I just drag the mic on with around with me with it on without knowing that'd be the best wouldn't it okay all right temple of sacred ashes farther into the frostback mountains in the wake of the templar's destruction the storied village which was also home to a dragon Worshipping cult during the fifth blight. Okay, that's fun. Now serves as a makeshift camp for those working to pick up the pieces. I see. Wait. I 
want to see current quests is what I want to see. Okay, that's under quests in Haven and quests in the Inquisitor's Path. My mic should be on. Pretty sure my voice is coming in loud and clear, and if it isn't, well, this is going to be embarrassing later. I have no one to tell me. I mean, I guess I could do a test, but whatever. The breach is calmed, but the trouble is only beginning. Alright, report to the Haven's Chantry. Even in these trying times, good health is not is not so hard to find. Explore Haven and meet some of the Inquisition's crafting masters. Speak with the smith, speak with the quartermaster, speak with the apothecary. Apothecary. Ugh. Speaking. Know thy enemy. Some items recovered in battle may later be worth studying. Give Minev an item to research. Okay. So, that's the big quest. I don't want to do that just yet. Right? I was just in there. No, we're not reporting there yet. We're going to go look around. We need to find the smithy and uh, the apothecary and the quartermaster. But I also need to position the chat. In case anyone shows up at this odd hour. So we're anyway. heretics just like that. Should we surrender or... Uh, don't be foolish. We are the Chantry, as much as any Grand Cleric. That prattle from Val Royale isn't the word of the Maker. It's politics. What? What's going on? Can I talk to them? Do hey. Do you think the mages will be able to seal the breach? I heard some speak of using the Templars instead. Oh. I suppose that would work as well. Um, hello? I'm the one who's gonna seal the breach. Smoke, are you- do you make me look cool or do you make me look, like, not as cool? I can't decide. Oh, damn. Well, there it is. <laughs> what is this dance they're doing over there? I'm so confused. Okay, let's go. Actually, hold up. You are a person I can talk to. We're gonna freaking talk to you. Sigrid said the blankets weren't worth selling. He's giving them to the Inquisition for free. How kind of him. That, and he said people who freeze to death don't spend much coin. Well, he's not wrong. Alright, I need to talk to... I can't even read that name. I need to... Are my glasses already, like, not in grade? What is this? It's friend, I think. I didn't realize any of Leliana's Oxmen mercenaries were still here. Well, if you want new gear, you pay for it. Oh, you're her. Thryn, Inquisition Quartermaster. I'm doing what I can to supply this mess. If you find what I need to fill one of my requisitions, I'd appreciate you bringing it in. What did you mean when you mentioned requisitions? I'm making this Inquisition run with what we have, but we're not a real army. We're stretched thin on materials, so I've put up a requisition list for anything that could help our people. Here, take a look. You find some iron and a good logging site, Maybe Harriet can get our troops better weapons. Okay. If I have material for a special order, do I bring it to you? Just take it over there. One of my boys will take the materials or jot down what you found. Alright. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Eldon under Tenlogain McTeer. 
best commanding officer this world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who held that opinion. King Alistair offered my services to the Inquisition, probably to get rid of me. Uh, does she know about stuff? Does she know about this stuff? Probably. I feel like she would know a little bit. I know about this stuff. <laughs> With that attitude, I can't imagine how you made enemies in Denerim. People just don't want to hear the truth. I was at Ostagar, and I know what really happened. King Kalen overextended his position, and the Grey Wardens were too late lighting a signal. Following the original plan would have gotten everyone killed. Turn Loghain made the right decision. I apologize. Sister Liliana told me I shouldn't talk about this. Just forget it. <laughs> no shit, she told you we shouldn't talk about this. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, Delia would be... God, Delia. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Farewell. Make her go with you. All the makeup stuff. A f study of the Fifth Light, Volume 1. Having the best and brightest. Speak of the Smith, speak of the apothecary. Okay. Uh, history is the other. Wait, no, I'll go back. Only fools ignore the history of the ground they walk and the people they meet. Hmm, fair point, I see. Yeah. Alright, what do we got? A chant for the part it is here. <laughs> and a study of the fifth light, volume one. While some of my contemporaries dispute whether the fifth light was a true blight, or merely a large darkspawn resurgence. Historians agree that it began in the swamps of the Kokari Wilds on the southeastern border of Ferelden in the year 9... 930. <laughs> I don't... How am I supposed to say that? Whatever. In the year 930... 930 Dragon. Oh, gosh. Okay, that's probably not how you say that. King Kaelin Theron was swift in responding to the threat gathering the royal army, every Grey Warden in his country, and sending a call for the aid to the Ferelden nobility. The assembled armies laid a trap in the ruins of Ostagar, hoping to crush the force before it reached civilization, but they failed. Darkspawn overran the defenses of Ostagar and decimated the king and his army. They continued their advance into Ferelden unopposed. Only two Grey Wardens managed to escape the slaughter, and somehow, they came into possession of ancient trees, which compelled the races of men to join arms against the massing horde. The surviving wardens made their way to Klinok, Hold, home of the Ferelden Circle, and conscripted the mages. In desperate shation to find more allies, the wardens journeyed to the Bretlison Forest, seeking the Dalish, the elves, to join the growing army. Into the deep roads, the surviving wardens went, searching the Paragon Branca in hopes she could settle the unrest in Orzammar and unite the dwarves in the battle against the Archdemon. Branca could not be located, but another Paragon was found, the legendary Cardin, who forged a crown that ended all question of succession. Pyral Haramount was crowned King of Orzammar, and the dwarven armies marched from the surface. Despite their successes, though, greater challenges were yet to come. From A Study of the Fifth Light by Sister Petrine, Chantry Scholar. I guess that's that. Oh, wait, hold. There's more. There's more. The Conclave. I don't know what any of this means. Okay. It has been a year of little more than chaos. Yes, the mages voted to dissolve the Circle of Magi, but I will point this out. This vote came only after increased restrictions were placed on them, following the unfortunate events in Kirkwall. What other choice did they have? Yes, the Templar Order abandoned their duties and elected to pursue the mages to bring them back in line. But after a thousand years in which their sole rule was the mages' keepers, what else could one expect? They envisioned the war over quickly, a single battle that would see the mages' resolve crumble after which they would meekly return to confinement. 
that did not happen. This conflict could drag on forever, with advantage on either, si either side. Both Templars and Mages see this, unless they have agreed to come to the Conclave. This is our chance. Words need to be said which have not been said. A compromise must be reached because there is no other choice. I believe this with all my heart. I am not without fault in this. Perhaps I push too hard for reform, or not hard enough. The Maker has seen fit to give me another chance. I will not squander it. The Temple of Sacred Ashes is where, together, we will make history, and with luck, we will be remembered kindly for it. From the Journals of Divine Justinia V. Dragon, 941. The birth of the Chantry took place more than nine ages ago. The misfits of time have obscured once well-known facts. It is commonly believed the Chantry alone created the Templars and the Circle of Magi. Few recall there was ever an Inquisition. Those who do believe it predated the Chantry, hunting cultists and mages in reign of terror ending only upon its transformation into the Templar Order. This is not quite the truth. One might keep in mind the state of Thetis prior to the Chantry's creation, a world where the only source of order, the Vinter Imperium, had fallen apart. People blamed magic for the death of Andraste, the blight, the terror they saw every day. And not without reason. Abominations and demons rampaged the countryside. No one was safe. The separate groups of men and women initially formed the Seekers of Truth determined to re-establish order because no one else would do what was necessary. The truth they sought, the question they tried to answer, was how to restore its sanity in a world gone mad. <coughs> oh, God, my voice. <coughs> was theirs a reign of terror? Perhaps. Evidence suggests they were as vigilant in their protection of mages as they were of regular people. When they intervened, they convened an ad hoc trial to determine the guilty party. This even application of justice led to their poor reputation. The seekers came down against every group one at a time at one time or another, their inquisition gaining notoriety for being on no one's side but their own. They consider themselves good people, however, followers of the Maker's true commandments. This was never more evident than when they lay down their banner in support of the fledging Chantry. They believed with all their heart that the Templar Order was the answer a desperate Thetis needed in a terrible time. Ultimately, the Inquisition was composed of independent idealists, not Chantry zealots. That is the truth. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar, by Brother Genitivi? I don't know. I don't know how to say that person's name. Oh, wow. That was our history lesson for the day, I think. Maybe. Actually, no. We may have to read a whole lot fucking more. <laughs> Adar the Vasoth. Vashoth? The Qunari and Parvalin live under the Qun, a religious and philosophical doctrine dictating every aspect of their society. Harad Adar's parents left that restrictive life before she was born, settling in the free marches and raising their child outside the Qun. Qunari brought up outside the soci their society are still feared, shunned, or misunderstood by most people in the South. The average citizen of Orle or Ferlelvin assume they are cold-blooded thralls or vicious bandits. Quinari, who are not part of the Quan, face limited acceptance and excite in society, often taken advantage of their often take advantage of their reputation by taking on mercenary work. Haradar joined the Vallas Cast Mercenary Company as a young adult, making a name for herself over the years as capable and resourceful soldier. She was hired to provide protection at the Conclave as a neutral party to stand between Templars and mages. After the disastrous explosion at the Temple of the Sacred Ashes that killed the vine, Adar was the only survivor. Rumors that the mysterious mark on her hand is a sign of the Maker's favor 
were spread by those who claim that they saw the divine prophet and Draste herself lead Adar out of the fate. Cassandra Pentecast. Lord Seeker Lucius, I am fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declaration, Lord Seeker Lambert. Creed, the Templars away... No. <laughs> Lord Seeker Lambert pried the Templars away from the Chantry control and led them into an assembly upon all mages, for reasons you both find justified. One, however... <laughs> Wait, no. I, however, am uncertain when the Seekers of Truth went from guarding against injustice to perpetrating it. If you truly believe th is, that is not the case, I suggest you look out a window at the chaos this war has caused, and ask yourself if Thetis will, rec Thetis will recover even if you are victorious. I remain at Divine Justinia's right hand, and will stay there even if you brand me traitor. I am sorry, but there is too much to stare at. Too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's foundation. What? Cassandra wrote that? In regards to what? Oh, okay. Oh. All right. So this is a little bit pro mage. I I I totally dissected what I was reading completely. Um or at least okay, so Cassandra's in an interesting political place, quite interestingly. Um Divine Justinia the four I, what are Roman numerals formerly the revered mother Dorothea of Orlais divine Justinia some number rose no oh, not rose as in a name rose as in rose to power after the death of divine Beatrix the third in the year 934 of the dragon age Little is known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister, Leilana, or Le Le Leliana, rather, as a close advisor. A headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumored support of the Mage Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used to controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called the summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templars splintered from the Chantry. The Divine Conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the most holy place in Thetis. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the Conclave, consumed the Temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hopes for peace. Devin Div Divine Justinia perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes. The Chantry flounders, leaderless, in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thetis, Justinia might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. Damn, this is getting serious. I'm glad I read this codex, because, like, I'm getting really into this now. Like, the story and the lore, and I'm excited. Oh, who the heck's High Chancellor Roderick? 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 Roderick. There are some who claim men have no place in the Chantry, beyond the lowest rank of scholarly brothers and those who take their place amongst the Templars. It is not true. I'm, I'm, I'm giving this dude the side eye. <laughs> Is this who I think it is? Is it that person who's like, Yo, Cassandra, this is on your head. <coughs> Why am I coughing so much?
This is an organization spanning seven nations, from the smallest village chantry to the Grand Cathedral in Va- or something. I don't know how to say that. Roy- Royu? Royex? Roy- it takes more than sermons to keep it alive. There is an invisible army at work ensuring meals are delivered, repairs are made, and faithful attended to. Much of it done by Chantry brothers like myself. The position of High Chancellor places a man beside Most Holy. I control who is permitted audience, handle her correspondence, deliver her word to Thetis, and serve as her advisor on matters which may be mundane, but cannot be disregarded. If I have influence, let it be said it is something I use sparingly, if at all. Hmm, I wonder if I believe that. This is a task to which I devote myself with solemn- God, I- This guy's a greaseball. I and my fellows bear a bur- Oh, bear a burden, so that others are free to guide the spirits of Thetis encumbered. That's that's I, that's complete bullshit. I'm I'm sure of it. I'm like maybe I, he believes it on some level, but like that's bullshit. Ah. Uh. Okay, hold up. Soulless. Wait. Oh, okay, this is from Liliana. Cassandra, I understand our first order of business must be to investigate this bizarre breach in the sky and protect people from the demons descending. While my search continues, I wish to draw your attention to a new arrival at our camp, an elven apostate calling himself Solus. Solus entered the camp voluntarily, surrendering his staff to the Chantry forces without protest. He is not Dalish and says that he has never been part of the Circle claiming instead to have studied magic peacefully on his own. Particularly magic tied to the Fade. While I suspect you'll be reluctant to accept the help of an apostate, Solus did come to us freely. Witnesses saw him in a nearby village at the time of the blast, so he was likely not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. However, he has described the effects of the breach in enough detail to convince me that he knows more about the Fade than anyone else present. Solus has requested permission to study the lone survivor and one of the smaller rifts, in hopes of finding a way to seal the breach. He has correctly guessed that it is growing, and believes it will destroy the entire world unless we find a way to stop it. Unless you object, I will allow him his studies, under proper observation, of course. Varric Tethrus. There's a power in stories. That's all history is. The best tales. The ones that last. Might as well be mine. Varric Tethras of the Dwarven Merchants Guild of Kirkwall is famous, or infamous, for two things. His books, and his association with the Champion of Kirkwall. <clears throat> After the Templars and Circles broke away from the Chantry, Divine Justinia sent her agents to Kirkwall, where the roots of the war began. In search of answers, the champion had long since disappeared, but Varric had written a book on his friend's involvement in the destruction of the Kirkwall Chantry, and the left and right hands of the Divine located him with surprising ease. They captured and interrogated him, then brought him to the Conclave to give his testimony. Wrong button again. Or rather, trigger stick. To the Divine. In person but fate decreed that he would never meet her. Oh, that's what he was doing there! Wait, so how long has it been since Dragon Age 2? It can't have been that long. Like, a couple years at best. At most. Because, like, this hasn't all been going on for too terribly long, has it? Creatures, groups. The organizations and peoples of Thetis are numerous and often draw hard lines to stand behind. Alright, we're gonna go to magic and places and groups and then, then we're gonna go back into the game.
The people of the Quan are perhaps the least understood group in Thetis. The Quinari Wars were brutal, but so was the Chantry Schism. So was the fall of the Imperium. Some of this misunderstanding is an accident of nature. The race we call Quinari are formidable. Nature has given them fierce horns and strange eyes, and the ignorant look on them and see monsters. Some is an accident of language. Few among the Quan people speak the common tongue, and fewer speak it well. In a culture that strives for mastery, to have only a passable degree of skill is humiliating indeed, and so they often keep quiet among foreigners, out of shame. But much of it is a result of the culture itself. The Quinori view their whole society as a singular, single creature, a living entity whose health and well-being are the responsibility of all. Each individual is only a tiny part of the whole, a drop of blood in its veins. Important not for itself, but for what it is to the whole creature. Because of this, the Quinari most, the Quinari most outsiders meet belong to the army, which the Quan regard as if it were the physical body, arms, legs, eyes, and ears, the thing a creature needs in order to interact with the world. One cannot get to know a person solely by studying his hand or his foot, and so one cannot simply meet the Quinari until one has visited their cities. That is where their mind and soul dwell. In S oh god, how do you say these things? In Saron and Parvolan, nah, we'll get it one day when we hear it. One can truly see the Quinari in their entirety. There, the unification of the Quinari into a single being is most evident. Workers whom the Quan call the mind produce everything the Quinari require. The soul, the priesthood, seeks a greater understanding of the self. The world and exhorts in the body and mind to continually strive for perfection. The body serves as the go-between for the mind, the soul, and the world. Everyone and everything has a place, decided by the Quan, in which they work for the good of the whole. It is a life of certainty, of equality, if not individuality. From the writers of the Seer of Kant R. 841, Blessed. All right, so that's a little thing about Haraz people. Not that she ever grew up around them at all, because, you know, her parents took her away and she grew up away from Quinari society. And then she became a mercenary. All right, so on to magic. Across much of Thetis, magic is a power that is feared, of, feared or reviled. But it is often proves useful. I cannot read today. But it often proves useful. The more magic is studied, the better off the people wielding or running from it. Oh, red lyrium. Fun. That stuff we saw earlier. Great Warden Seal. Damn. Okay. To answer your question, my lord, yes, I have indeed heard of the Red Lyrium of which you speak. A single piece of it surfaced in the eastern city of Kirkwall, and its influence alone was nearly enough to cause the city's destruction. As near as we can determine, it's reg it is regular Lyrium that has been somehow corrupted. Those who have touched Red Lyrium, or even come near it, report that it sings to them like whispers in the mind that slowly drive them mad. Oh shit, we stepped on that stuff earlier. Let's let's never do that again. Let's make sure we never touch that stuff. We do not know, however, what might stem from extended contact with red lyrium. Madness, surely. But there but would there be a physical corruption as well? What would happen if a mage or a templar used red lyrium? as they use regular lyrium. Oh shit, good lord, no. Can we not, can we not tell these horror stories, please? A far more disturbing fact is that the lyrium could be corrupt, is that lyrium could be corrupted at all. Treat any red lyrium you encounter as if it were poison. Do not go near it. Do not attempt to destroy it. And most importantly, do not attempt to use it. <laughs> 
I mean, currently I'm just going through the codex because I, I want to and immerse myself in the lore a little bit, but I'm going to finish with it. Um, I'm going to finish reading what entries I currently have in magic and places, and then I'm going to go into the game. And do things. Because, I don't know, I, I'm currently really enjoying this codex, to be honest. The Breach. What does it mean to pierce the veil? That which separates our world from the realm of dreams and demons. For the average man and woman, it is a frightening thought to consider just how fragile this separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, not a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in the streets where they walk, in farmers' fields as well as remote mountain vales. At any moment it can be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other horrors to flood into our world like water through a burst dam. Known lore tells us that small rifts can be sealed, but what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there is anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is for that possibility more than any other. From the True Thread of Magic by Lady Seeker Alandra Vale All right. Then we just have to learn about places and we're done. Wait, hold up. Nations and regions, cities and villages, landmarks and empty expanses. There are many places in Thetis to call home. Let's see, we have two entries. Haven. I would like to speak to you of Haven, the village in the Frostbacks, close to the Temple of Sacred Ashes. We are all aware of its past, not me. It was home to the disciples of Andraste, as they called themselves, descended from the people who built the temple itself. They had strayed over the years of isolation from their once noble roots to become dragon worshippers. After the hero of Ferelden discovered the Temple of Sacred Ashes, yeah, <laughs> the Temple of Sacred Ashes. <laughs> Something good did come out of my stuttering. That's good. Good. Hey, question. You guys can hear me, right? I never actually did do a mic check. This may be the embarrassing moment where I figured out... <laughs> that my mic isn't actually working, which would be great. There's one way to check. I have my own phone here. And I have it set up so I can see if I can hear myself on the channel feed. So I'm going to check that really quickly. Oh, yep, I can hear myself. We're good. So, my mic is working. That's good. That's always good. After the hero of Ferelden discovered the Temple of Sacred Ashes, <laughs> which the disciples guarded jealously, what remained of the cult moved on, and Haven was abandoned to the ice and snow. I passed through Haven on my, pilgr well, on my pilgrimage to see that I took shelter in the hall of Haven's Chantry. Though they were dusty from neglect, the walls of that lonely place were strong and shielded me from the biting winds. Peace came upon me. My eyes were open to Havel's incredible beauty. Beauty. 
It could not be overcome by the pain and the horror of the past. It could not be masked by decay and disuse. It would not be forgotten. Haven is precious to Orlay, to the Chantry, to the sunburst throne for its historical and religious significance. It is my will that Haven be restored, rededicated, no, re, re, what, how, what is that word? No, it is rededicated. Uh, it's like the words are swimming almost. Well, not quite swimming, because that implies, like, uh, dyslexia and stuff, which a thing I don't have, thankfully, um, because that would be very hard to deal with. It's just that my glasses aren't quite up to grade enough, so the words are just tiny, just this tad a little bit way of fuzzy. Just a little too small. Right. Rededicated to the service of Andraste and preserved for the ages, let it be a sanctuary for the pilgrims who seek out the Temple of Sacred Ashes. May they rest here beneath the cold, bright skies. May the glory of the Maker be revealed to them as they gaze upon the gray peaks that are the work of his hand. Now and forevermore, let this be a haven for the faithful. From the speech of Divine Justinia, in 931 Dragon. Uh, poor Divine Justinia. Temple of Sacred Ashes, Rediscovered. According to the legend, the sacred ashes of Andraste were carried out of Imperium by Havard, disciple of Our Lady. Wounded by Tevinter's soldiers, when he tried to stop Andraste's capture, Havard was too late in coming to Minthrouth. Definitely not that. To stop the execution, all he found was her ashes left out in the elements. As soon as all Havard touched them, Andraste appeared in a vision. Rise, she said, Aegis of the Faith. The Maker shall never forget you so long as I remember. The Aegis of the Faith, so named by our prophet herself, stood at her word and found his wounds healed and his spirit renewed. He gathered the ashes of Andraste and returned to the lands of the Alamari tribes, which are now Ferelden. It's said that Andraste's song led him to a holy site, where Havard and his followers built a temple to house her in remains. There the legend ends. For centuries, men searched for the Temple of Sacred Ashes, finding only rumors and tall tales. Chantry scholars concluded there was no temple. There were no sacred ashes. It was all a myth, allegory intended to inspire and feed the fire of faith. Then the hero of Ferelden came, seeking a cure to a dying Arl, with the miraculous power of the ashes. The hero, with the help of the renowned scholar Brother Ferdinand Givet, uh, I don't know how to say your name, traced the steps of the ancients and came to a remote ruin, high in the Frostback Mountains. There the urn of sacred ashes waited, as the legend said it would. After the triumph of the righteous over the fifth blight, the temple's discovery was shared with the world. Much to our dismay, however, by the time our soldiers arrived at the temple, the urn had disappeared. To this day, we do not know who took them or why. All that is certain is that it was the Maker's will. The hero of Ferelda did not share the discovery with the world, and Brother Ch... whose research made it possible, had disappeared without a trace. Truth, however, will always out... and rumors circulated about the cause of Arl Eamon's Geteran's miraculous recovery. Agents of the Chantry investigated claims about the urn of sacred ashes, and were eventually led, as the hero had been led, to the temple. By the time our soldiers reached it, however, the urn was nowhere to be found. Though the ashes were gone, the temple itself stood, and it has since become a source of hope for the faithful. If the Grand Cathedral is the beating heart of our Chantry, then the Temple of Sacred Ashes is her soul. Here we honor the Chantry's past, even as we forge bravely into our future. From a lecture delivered by Chantry scholar Mother Clothide at the University of Orlais in 938 Dragon. All right, and with that, we are ready to jump back into the game. All right, what were we doing? We were looking for a smith and an apothecary. 
right? That's what we were doing. We're gonna go run around this camp. I think there's- is that a person to talk to? Hey, guard, can I talk to you? You're not a guard. Never mind. You're- you're clearly not guards. sitting and walking back and forth. Okay, this guy looks less, like, terrified of the world as the guy earlier, way before, in uh, the other stream I did. Oh my god, are there Mabaris here? Yes, please. Can I have a Mabari? Please and thank you. Oh, okay. It's Varric. I want to talk to Varric. Varric, talk to me. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? I mean, you go from being the most wanted criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. <laughs> <laughs> this is all bullshit. Too many people died up there. I'm fine. I'm guarded. I can barely keep up. I'm just glad I'm still standing after all that. I still can't believe you survived Cassandra. You're lucky you were out cold for most of her frothing rage. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them. And now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. The breach needs to be sealed. The sooner the better. If it can be sealed, you might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. Well then. All right, you feeling miraculous today, hurrah? In general, because I feel like this whole damn game is going to need a miracle. I don't know which way I'm going. Maybe this way. Let's check this way. Some people over there. Maybe I can find this smith somewhere. Can I go in this house? OMG, I can. Excuse me. I oh, I don't feel no welcome signs here. Of the Grey Wardens anywhere. Nope. You're certain. Good to see you. I just don't. Grey Wardens, you said? No. We're not paying you to be sarcastic. Just rumors. Oh. Thank you. Sky. Oh, damn it. You sure? Maker, I hope it's not me. I mean, I could go to the codex, but I don't really want to at this point. Ooh, Very well. Trissa, are you... Are you the person I need to talk to? Yes, sir. It's 
just what I heard. Hey, I've heard this before. Of On a playlist on 8 tracks. It was an Inquisition playlist. I was trying to get all those feels. Hey, I got Patron of the Arts. Get you anything? What can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harris is the Inquisition Smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren, the quartermaster, can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segris. His prices aren't too high. Death? Oh, there's also my name. He studies beasts and things, as I understand. Farewell. Goodbye. Look, I'll get to the main quest in a little bit. I'll probably have an opportunity to go do these side quests later, but I could just do them now. A Tale of the Frostbats. Even mountains had a heart once. When the world was young, Korth the mountain father kept his throne at the peak of the Belenus, the mountain at the center of the world from which he could see all the corners of earth and sky, and he saw strong men become weak, brave men grow cowardly, and wise men turn foolish for love. Korth devised a plan that he might never be betrayed by his own heart, by taking it out and hiding it where no soul would ever dare search for it. Why, knows why are you doing this to me? He sealed it inside a... Oh, okay, there we go. He sealed it inside a golden cask, buried it in the earth, and raised around the fiercest mountains the world had ever seen, the Frostbacks, to guard it. But without his heart, the mountain father grew cruel. His chest was filled with bitter mountain winds that shrieked and howled like lost souls. Food lost its flavor, music had no sweetness, and he lost all joy in deeds of valor. He sent avalanches and earthquakes to torment the tribes of men. Gods and men rose against him, calling him a tyrant, but with no heart, Korth could not be slain. Soon there were no heroes left, either among men or gods, who would dare challenge Korth. The Lady of the Skies sent the best of her children, the swiftest, the cleverest, and strongest flyers, to scour the mountains for the missing heart, and for a year and a day they searched, but Sparrow and Raven, Vulture and Eagle, Swift and Albatross, returned to her with nothing. Then the I have no idea how to say that. Someone spoke up and offered to find the god's chief's heart. The other birds laughed for the... Oh, this is a bird. The... <laughs> that bird is a tiny bird. Too humble to soar, which spends half its time hopping along the ground. The lady would not give the little creature her blessing, for the mountains were too fierce even for eagles. But the bird set out anyway. A little bird traveled deep into the frostbacks, where she, when she could not fly, she crawled. She hugged the ground and weathered the worst mountain winds, and so made her lonely way to the valley where the heart beat. With all the god's terrible deeds, the heart was far too heavy for the tiny bird to carry, so she rolled it, little by little, out of the valley and down a cliff. And when the golden cast struck the earth, it shattered. The heart was full almost to bursting, and the pain of it roused the mountain god to come see what had happened. When Korth neared his heart, it leapt back into his chest, and he was whole again. Then Hakan's winter's breath bound Korth's chest with three bands of iron and three bands of ice so it could never again escape. And all the remaining gods named the part Tminigin, maybe, maybe that's how you say that, honored above even the loftiest eagles. The part Minigan, maybe. An Avar tale. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. Resources found here. Elf root iron. Okay. 
I'm not gonna open that. Can I close this? Trying to make me cry, lady. No, stop me. Fuck this, I'm out of here. I don't know where I'm going. What's up this way? Some stuff. Ooh. Hi, Solus. The chosen of Andraste. A blessed hero sent to save us all. Sounds dashing. I hope to be one. I've no interest in being a hero. All I want is to find a way to seal this breach. Pragmatic, but ultimately irrelevant. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time has a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. <laughs> How can you sleep there? You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins? Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I imagine you find some amazing things in there, alongside all the demons. Exactly. It is occasionally dangerous, yes. But more often it's just sad to see what has been lost. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. Mm. I will stay there. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodated, but you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Oh. <laughs> Just jump around a little bit, Solus. Okay, I don't... I don't think I need to go inside any of these buildings, but am I going to anyway? Hell yes. Let's go inside all of them. Hello? Is there loot? Do we have some loot? No. Wait. Hold up. There's a thing to read. On someone's bed. Let's read it. Um... 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 What? What? I'm, I'm, I'm not even reading this. What? <laughs> Is this a review? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's happening. That's the thing. All right. Okay. Let's go in the other houses. Pardon me. Oh. Ooh. I found the apothecary. Oh. 
I would love to upgrade some potions. Alright, you can upgrade potions you have already unlocked. To upgrade a potion, select a category, select a potion, then select upgrade. Potion upgrade requires a significant amount of herbs to unlock. In return, they give permanent and significant bonuses to your potions. And enhanced resistance for automatic combat grenades. Ooh. I want some fucking grenades. Instantly restores. Stretch out my legs. Ooh, what's Listen, this? Listen, to check for you to make sure these are safe to serve. They're fine. Nobody will take sick as long as she boils them right. Smart woman for asking, though. Quip potions? Everyone has potions at their disposal. That's Let me good. know if you need anything. We have some shared potions. Hey, I need to talk to you. Is what I need. Can I let you know if I need anything? <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. I shouldn't be surprised. You oxmen are tough as old leather. I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. Until the breach is closed, no one's safe. True. I'll keep the bandages handy. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually... Do that. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. Ooh, read this thing. Patient observations. Oh, is this mine? Pulse normal, breathing normal, still unresponsive, careful drop feet of prep cell... Prep elf root extract to hasten her recovery. A lot of thrashing mutters about too many eyes. Something about the gray. Encouraging? Hmm. Loot? Okay, no, I should not fucking touch that. But, like, it's, oh, it's so shiny. That's the upgrade potions. These are the quick potions. Potion assignment and replenishment. You can equip or replenish potions for each party member. Healing potions at the top of the radio meta are replenishable for free occupant, but all other potions requires a Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Perhaps another time. Alright. We did some stuff. little place. I love how I'm just leaving all these doors open in winter. It's so great of me. Okay, so where's the smith? Oh, there's a thing. I can read it. Have you ever heard the story of King Bedor? Bedor, like most kings, was a man of great power. 
pied. He was a man of great pride. He pied many people. I don't know what that means. Is that a euphemism? Of great pride, who expected nothing but complete loyalty from his subjects. He believed the best way to achieve this was through fear. After all, those who feared him would never close him or question him. No, cross him or question his rule. Most importantly, those who feared him would always seek to please him. Bedouir cultivated terror in his subordinates through the gleeful and unrestrained use of contraption referred to as the Maiden. The Maiden- oh, jeez. Great. The Maiden was a hinged iron castic, as high and as wide and as deep as a man, with vicious spike within. Meant to pierce through the poor sword locked into it. Ha 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 Why the fuck is this a thing? Ah, uh, Edward's maiden was a prized possess. Nah, I'm good, I'm good. I don't want this gory story. Is that <laughs> is that hurrah being like, oh, I I see. I don't want that. No, she wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> Well, that's just another entrance there. Pardon me. I've got stuff to do. Stuff to do and places to be. You dislike the Templar system? No. Oh, this conversation again. Maybe it's this way. Maybe we open this thing. We haven't opened it yet. Oh, no. But there's a thing I can read. Patient observations. Day three. Less thrashing. Some response to stimulus. Vitals seem solid. Two attempts so far by locals to break into the chantry to kill my patient. Jeez. All this work to save her life, and will they just execute her? We'll inform Lady Cassandra. I expect her to wake before the morn. Well, let's not forget the situation I was in beforehand. Also, what is going on? Okay, that's that's not her hand. That's a horn at her belt. I was like, what is going on with your hand? That's not your hand. <gasps> Loot. No, I shouldn't. When there was no sky maker, you were the sky. Oh, when God. There was no earth, you were the earth. Let's, let's read about when the maker, nothing, because you it seems relevant to my... Look, I don't... I don't like people. I don't like divinity. I don't like the concept of divinity. I don't believe divinity is a thing, personally. So it just rubs me the wrong way, and people are like, ah, yes. You and your everlasting knowledge and perfection. And I'm like, what the fuck? No one's perfect. When there was no sky, Not even gods. You were the sky. When there was no earth, you were the earth. When so I guess nothing, that's a personal little bit about me that I just shared in this video game video, but you know what? I don't really care. That's fine by me. Um, Codex. What exactly can we know about the Maker? Is it under tales? Stories and songs are windows into the minds of the people. Okay. So it must be tales. I guess. Is that where the Maker is? Maker. Oh, what? Oh, okay, it's just, it's literally just a song. Never mind. It's not actually, like, informational. Be like, here is the hist of their religion and, like, how it works and what they believe about the Maker and, like, the history of that, and that would have been interesting. I'm sure that's somewhere. I'm sure I can find that somewhere out there, though, if I really wanted to, like, on the internet. Um, but no. Let's go this way. has revealed to me as there is but one world one life one death there is but one god and oh. he is our maker yay what what's that is there a word for like i guess the opposite of universalism kind of I don't know. These truths the maker has yeah. As there is but one world. Buy sell. One life, one death. Do I want to buy or sell some stuff? And Maybe. Is our maker. Do I have enough gold? Um, no, I have. Ooh, I could have a broad axe. 
shit. What if I want an axe? Oh, okay, no. No, it's not like a two-handed. I want a two-handed. What? No, no face paint for me. Okay, so that's for like that stuff. Cross Crafting material, valuables, weapons, schematics, sturdy balance grip. More schematics, relics, please. Other buy back. Okay, interesting. These truths the Maker has revealed to me. As there is but one God, one wow, life. Wow, this is a thing death. a lot of people say. There is but I feel like I'm going the wrong way. I probably am. I don't there's, see there's why we need good there. siege equipment. They're not laying siege to anything. That's an excellent point, no. recruit. But if someone comes to lay siege to us, perhaps it will be best for us to have some means to fight back. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Where does this go? Okay, that goes nowhere. This goes... Also, no. Oh, excuse me. I want some water. I have a fact that I need some water, I think. Oh. Thank you for hurrying with the potions. We have so many injured. Ah, you're awake and out of Lady Cassandra's clutches. And here I paid that little knife ear to inform me the moment you were free. No matter, no matter. Segret, honored to meet you. Thank you for all you've done. Hopefully, we'll still do. <laughs> Can I just be curt with this guy? What do you think I'll be doing, exactly? Word's already spreading that if anyone could close that blighted thing in the sky, it's you. Anything you need is yours. For a reasonable price, of course. Supplies are a little tight, given the circumstances. Until later. Stay safe. Uh. Still got demons pulling out of the rifts. This way? Can I check this place? Hello? Da da da! Uh, pardon me? Uh, there's gotta be a smith somewhere around here. Where is there a smith? I'm looking for the smith. I'm going to open every house, not, well, every, every house, every door, every house, every door, everything. I'm going to open all the things. Please just send me over to see if you need Seek anything. me by your side in death. Make me one within your glory. And let the world once more see your favor. Where? Is it really not anywhere to be found? Do, 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 do. Who are we fighting no anyway, sir? I've heard it was mages. Demons. No one really knows. That's the maker's truth. All you need to know is that we're holding this place against whoever comes to take it. <laughs> Boy, he got himself in trouble. Lou, no. Not mine. This no, this is back here. Where 
Where's the smith? Speak only the word. Sing only the charm. Then the golden city is thine. The You're golden about city. Them. I understand that. Isn't anyone? I mean, look at that freaking thing. Oh. Ooh, Mabari. You know, Andraste is old Bermari. He didn't show up in the chant. If you ask these holy sisters, well, they'll say Andraste can't have some big old smelly war dog. But all Ferelden knows it's right. Our sweet lady needs someone who would warm her feet at night. And there is Andraste's and Mabari, by the holy prophet's side. In the fight against Tevinter, that dog would never hide. They say that the Maker sent him special, always loyal without pride, so he could be the sworn companion of the Maker's holy bride. Oh, the dog he guards in Draste, without arrogance or fear, only asking of his mistress, just a scratch behind the ears. But then old Merfrath gets to plotting, tries to lure that dog away, but even as they trap the prophet, her Mabari never strays. And there's Andraste's Mabari by the holy prophet's side, in the fight against Tevinter, that dog would never hide. They say the maker sent him special, always loyal without pride, so he could be sworn companion of the maker's holy bride. Oh, they brought, thought the wounds had killed him, but then he limped out toward the fire. <coughs> and Hesarian. <coughs> excuse me. She shed a tear as that dog laid on the pyre. There's Andraste's Mabari by the Holy Prophet's side. In the fight against Tevinter, that dog would never hide. They say the Maker sent him special, always loyal without pride, so he could be the sworn companion of the Maker's Holy Bride. Damn, that was intense. I'm gonna get some water real quick and be right back. I don't know if my mic still stays with me even when I go away, like, from range of the PS4, but I don't know if it, like, still picks up the mic and everything, but I'm gonna bring it with me because I've clipped the mic to my shirt, so, you know. the Mabari is my question. Like, where are my lovely dogs? <laughs> and also, we are finding this smith. Come hell or high water. Also, I should really sleep. Why did I decide to stream at like three? Why did I do that? It's because I'm me. I mean, what else would I do? Where the fuzz is this smith? Is there like a map I can consult? this? No. Quest map. Yes. Requisition for weapons. The right wep materials, weapons to the Inquisition mission can be requisitioned to the quartermaster. Fill the requisition. Okay. Merchant. Merchant. Solace. Apothecary. Where the fuzz? Haven's best and brightest. Speak with the smith. That way. Okay, that's my active quest now. Alright, let's go. Now. Oh, he's outside the gates? Fuck it. Oh, hey. What's up? Look at all this. Though you had granted them power over the very fade itself, 
Though they sang hymns of praise unending, though they could do anything, they destroyed nothing, created nothing, loved nothing. If the Inquisition wants to field a decent cavalry, it needs better horses. I heard Seeker Pentecost might try to acquire suitable mounts from Master Dennett in the Hinterlands. Oh, and who are you to be fishing around for what the higher-ups are doing? Back in Angsburg, my uncle was Fifth Praetor. And what's that mean for you back in Arnsberg? Honestly, about as much as it does here. Oh, sorry. Flissa thought you and your men might be working up a thirst. She sent me over to see if you needed anything. We're fine, thank you. Excuse me, can I talk to you? <clears throat> Expected you'd be by. I'm Harriet, and everyone knows who you are. How's the new gear fit? <coughs> Not exactly what I'm used to. Hm. Wrong time for style to dictate what you wear. World's gone mad. Stock armor and blades are good against bandits, but we're not fighting bandits. My gear will see you through demons, apostates, whatever this world throws you. <coughs> so, you need custom work, something special. You bring the materials to us, we'll make it happen. If I want something, what can you make? Start simple. Something to keep you safe. Take a look at it on the table there and we can talk. You'll need materials. We should have what you want just outside. Yeah, <coughs> <coughs> gosh, I need some water. Some more water. outfits the Inquisition soldiers. Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the quartermaster. She'll set up requisitions. Goodbye. Right. Okay, I will do that. Alright. Defender mail. What do we need? Armor. Materials. Defense. Seven metal. Two overall, uh, eleven metal, right? Eleven metal of what? What type you of metal? Let me know. Okay, I 
I don't suppose you have any metal to spare. Not that I really need it at this point, though. I think I'm done here. I'm gonna go back inside. Actually, hold on. I don't need the dogs. Dogs. Oh, the doggies. So much noise. I'm sure I'd find some dogs, but no. Who are you? See reason, Mister. We cannot stay here. Why not? Because we're Templars. What does that even mean anymore? That we splinter and fight amongst ourselves instead of protecting the mages? Better that than stay here with this Inquisition. You're awfully quick to dismiss the people who saved your life. Yes. You're not going to rejoin the Order? When the temple went up, your forces rescued those few of us still alive. My life is a debt I intend to repay, however I can. Do you have any idea what caused the explosion? No, I'm just a recruit. Belief and faith doesn't get you closer to the important meetings. Though that distance did save my life. I like your take on the Templar Order. It's a shadow of what it was. Where once we both protected all people from the dangers of magic, we now posture and grab at power. One day, I hope the circles are again sanctuaries where mages can practice their craft. I will talk to you later. Walk in the Maker's grace. Alright then. I'm gonna go back up and we're gonna do the main quest. There was no word. Sorry, I just wanted to check the broadcast real quick. That's why the screen cut out. Too many wounded. Not enough bandages to go around. Start tearing off shirts then. If the Inquisition can afford fancy new uniforms, it can afford bandages. Alright, let's do this. Does it trouble you? <laughs> I just wish I knew what it was. Or how I got it. We will find out. What's important is that your mark is now stable. As is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the Mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. That is not easy to come by. Clearly you have something in mind. We do. May I present Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. Such as they are, we lost many soldiers in the valley, 
And I fear many more before this is through. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. You're even taller than I'd heard. And of course, you know Sister Liliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes, tactfully put, Cassandra. That's an impressive bunch of titles. I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. We need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. Oh. That didn't take long. Shouldn't they be busy arguing over who's going to become divine? Some are calling you, a Gunari, the Herald of Andraste. That frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy. And we, heretics, for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the Majors or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the Temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading. Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? It's... a little unsettling. <laughs> I'm sure the Chantry would agree. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. They aren't more concerned about the breach? The real threat? They do know it's a threat. They just don't think we can stop it. The Chantry is telling everyone you'll make it worse. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. Why would someone from the Chantry help a declared heretic? I understand she's a reasonable sort. Perhaps she does not agree with her sisters. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. Oh, so this is actually, like, officially the title now. Oh, okay. The War Table allows you to apply the power of the Inquisition through Orlais and Ferelden. Mother Giselle is in the Hinterlands, which can be found on Ferelden's side of the table. Okay. Conquered by Orlais, torn by civil war, ravaged by the Fifth Blight, Ferelden is no stranger to hardship. With the Veil weakened, the land is more turbulent than ever. Did you see the message I sent? Yes, thank you. Known for the culture of extravagant nobility, yet also as the birthplace of the Chantry, Orlais is the most powerful human nation in Thetis. What about the other nations? Is my question. What about those nations? What are we gonna learn about them? We have no Inquisition perks. We have one power. Inquisition can lock new areas for you to explore through scouting operations. Perform the scouting operation for the Hinterlands on the Ferelden side of the war table now. Oh, that 
the Hinter Lens. Scout the Hinter Lens costs one. Mother Gell was last seen in the Hinterlands, outside Redcliffe, tending refugees who fled the fighting between renegade Templars and apostate mages. The latest reports suggest that the vicious struggle between the two groups has spread to the Hinterlands, catching the refugees and Mother Giselle in the middle. It is vital to protect her and, if possible, restore order to the area. If Giselle dies, any hope of the Chantry's support dies with her. My scouts will slip past the fighting, find her, and protect her with their lives. All right. Let's do this. Oh. Well then. Scout the Hinterlands. We avoided the fighting as best we could. It's every bit as bad as we feared. The apostates are mad, attacking anything that moves, and it appears that the Templars here aren't following anyone's orders any longer. We located Mother Giselle and are trying to protect her, but she refuses to leave her the refugees until we've ensured their safety. That will be hard to do without the troops to push the apostates and the Templars out of the area. Commander Cullen asked me to make inquiries of Master Danette a retired horse master of Redcliffe, who lives in the area. We tried to contact him about obtaining better horses for the Inquisition, but we've been unable to get through the fighter. Lead Scout Har Harding. New area unlocked. Alright, thank you for the report, Liliana. Lil Liliana? Yeah, Liliana is how you say that. Ugh, I'm gonna mess that up so much. Would you like to gather your party and venture to the Hinterlands now? Well, I mean, you know what else is there to do? We've got Varric. Cassandra. And so It's the shade. Am I supposed to be seeing a screen because it's it's not doing a thing? Hello? Game? World of Andraste. I've heard the stories. Everyone has. We know what you did at the breach. They might not know much about the Canari, but you'll get no back talk from anyone here. That's a promise. Inquisition Scout Harding, at your service. I, all of us here, will do whatever we can to help. Harding, huh? Ever been to Kirkwall's High Town? I can't say I have. Why? You'd be Harding and I... No, <laughs> never mind. Ugh. <laughs> What's the situation out here in the Hinterlands? We came to secure horses from Redcliffe's old horse master. 
I grew up here, and people always said that Dennett's herds were the strongest and the fastest this side of the Frostbacks. But with the Mage Templar fighting getting worse, we couldn't get to Dennett. Maker only knows if he's even still alive. Mother Giselle's at the crossroads helping refugees and the wounded. Our latest reports say that the war's spread there, too. Corporal Vale and our men are doing what they can to help protect the people, but they won't be able to hold out very long. You best get going. No time to lose. All right, let's do this. The threat remains clear. All threats at the crossroads. All right. What is that? Equip potions. Forces speak with Dennett. This seems to be all good stuff here. It's a beautiful game. I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, we go this way. Wait, hold up. There's a person to talk to. I think. Maybe? Hello? Do I talk to you? Do I talk? Who do I talk to? Where do I go? This way. Requisition officer. This might interest you, sir. Sure. What is it? Could prove useful, sir. All right. Nothing to report, sir. What? I'm confused. What? What do you mean nothing? To the fallow mire. Okay. Noted. Activate fade rifts have been spotted on the outskirts along Redcliff Road. All right. Holding the hint <coughs> lens. <coughs> Alright. Let's do that. Children's tapestry requisition. Okay, so this is the thing she gave me. Orlesian nobles are clamoring for tapestries with an Inquisition theme. What? Why the fuck? I don't have time for that. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Nestled in the heart of Ferelden are the old forests and farmsteads of the Hinterlands. This rocky rolling gateway to Redcliffe has now fallen into chaos. In conflict between mages and Templars forced many off their lands. Demons stalk the hills in reports of strange magic about near Redcliffe. Alright, let's go. That's not the way we go. That's off the damn cliff. Let's be this. There's only one way down here. Is that a pig? No, it's not a pig. It was an animal. It was like a goat thing. I want to chase the goat thing, but that's probably a very poor use of time. I don't... What do we... What do we do? Where do we go? Actually, hold up. Quest map, please. No threat remains. Clear threats at the crossroad. Okay. We can go there. What else do we have to do here, though? The threat remains. Oh. That's the 
big thing. We need to do other stuff. Like this. There we go. That's what I want to do. Oh, they're everywhere. Okay, great, good. Um, pardon me. And you seem to have a quest marker here. A letter and into home. In an empty home, rather. Brythus, I know you escaped with the other mages, and I know you'll come here. Father told me that if you ever strayed, he'd put you down himself. <laughs> if you're here, you know he's dead, but I'm not. I'll be killing apostates and waiting for you at the old Fenix place to the north. Got Father's sword and my true brothers and the Templars. Come if you're man enough. You <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the hell? That's your brother. That is your brother. What kind of... This is some, like, Cain and Abel shit. That may be worth investigating. Um... It sounds like a heartache to me. And a whole mess of trouble. Blood Brothers. Look, we're not going to purposely seek it out. If we find it, though, we find it. Elf fruit. I would love some elf fruit. Very useful. More. Wait. Um, should I feel bad about this? Uh, I mean, this place seems abandoned anyway. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. How am I going? What are you doing? Hello. Going this way. Look, don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just living amongst the sheep. There's apparently something of importance here. Take sketch of Callahan's foot. Can we not do that? Is that- are those shade or are those- Ah, fuck it, who am I kidding? Wait, nope, those are definitely Templars. Um, what if I just didn't get involved? Nope! 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 I'm not doing that. Wait, are those shade? Those fucking shade? No, those aren't shade. No, I don't. Apostates. Oh. Okay. Oh, they're coming. You know. Let's do this. They're upon us. You may be an apostate, but I'm an earthman. The apostates have fled to the hills. Uh, not so much to be. The hell? Why is your body. Okay, that made so much sense. Whatever. A letter. Stronghold of the apostate mages. Let the fools in Redcliffe play the good mage, as they always do. We know the truth. This world is ours to conquer. And every worthless peasant who threw a stone, every Templar who glared in disappointment at our heroine, deserves to know it. Follow the trail to the Witchwood and find your brothers. An unsigned letter, the scratched handwriting almost too sloppy to read. Oh, fuck, why the hell... Why the hell is this happening? 
<clears throat> I mean, I know why this is happening. Years of oppression and, like, a bunch of other shit. Like, a whole bunch of complicated shit. Um, there's something up this way, though. Figure this out. What's this? What is this? Um... Oh. What? Oh, this is some bullshit. That's not it. How the fuck? What? No. I want to do this. I want to solve the puzzle. Let me do the thing. No, that's bad. Restart. What? I want to take forever on this. That didn't take as long as I thought. Constellation Judux. Depicted as a downturn sword, the Constellation Judux is oft called the Sword of Mercy in common parlance. Even though the sword image was assigned to the stars long before Andrastic time, Judux referred to the concept of justice in ancient Devitur, and the downturned aspect of the sword indicated a guilty verdict, which in those times generally translated to execution. Obviously, with its modern meaning and use interpretation, and use as a symbol of the temple our order, the old interpretation is frowned upon in scholarly circles. From a study of Theodosian astronomy by Sister Orin Patriarchus. Strength. Where does this lead? What? Are we doing this? Is this a thing we're doing now? Also, did you guys just get a level up? Oh yeah, that's some points there. Spirit, masters of the school, God's spirit's protection as well as the essence of the fate itself. Their spirits disrupts hostile magic, create defensive barriers, and heal injuries. Okay. That seems useful. But what else do we have? Oh, 
Oh, you don't have that. Winter stillness. Sounds really useful. Okay, winter stillness. Then back. Okay. Does mana restore over time? <coughs> All right, Some points to spend. Some points to spend. Let's see. 
that's good. That's everyone then. Do a quick save. Hostates on the Witch Woods. Uh, fighting between Hostate Mages and Rogue Templars has driven refugees from their homeland and endangered everyone in the area. Search Witch Woods Lady Hostate Stronghold. Alright. Of course, we gotta hold it into one's event. That. A sketch of a castell on Rocky Ridge marks the spot along a broken hill. Find the spot marked on the sketch. Maybe in a little bit. Regarding your inquiry regarding the so-called astrariums, it is our concern. It is, it is our considered belief that these are relics from a cult that existed in the pre-Andrastian era of the Venture Imperium. Now, what would be a considered a cult in society that worshipped the old gods, an order of magisters who believed in the destruction of the magisterium, the governing body of the Imperium that determines which mages are and are not given the magister title. A member of this order wished to return to an earlier period where dreamers ruled, and evidence indicates they operated throughout to winter, primarily in the frontiers areas. There they would lock away their secrets, caches of treasure, and perhaps even secret meeting places, but we have no way of knowing for certain. Lockable only through knowledge of an ancient astronomy, a practice that we understand rather than out of a fashion in the late to winter period. According to our investigation, each of the Asturians could point to the secret cache of one of the three constellations that have mapped each device present at the site. Connect the Dwarfers in the correct configuration and it would be revealed. Many of these relics were sought out by Andrastian cultists in the early Divine Age, the Order of Fiery Promise in particular, and destroyed. Why? Because they believed the Asturians held together the veil and that destroying them would destroy the veil and thus the world. Such is the way of cults of any kind. True reasons for what they do could never truly be understood by modern minds. From a letter written by Magister Palindaeus Pal 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 something, head of the Corial Order 512, exalted. Huh, well that's a bit ago. What are you doing, Solus? A good person would sleep. I am not a good person. Wait, swords. I can walk right over them. What's this one? Hello! You're so cute! Found a little fox. And I found some iron. Iron is good. Iron is grand. Don't mind me, I just like jumping off cliffs. Wow! All fruit. See, I can feel, especially, like, no reason to feel guilty about that old fruit. Am I supposed to go up somewhere? Or am I here? That's a hawk. Not a hawk. <laughs> a crow. A crow is a bad omen. Sometimes. Depending on who you ask. And when you ask. 
Oh. Hold up. Quest map, please. What is that? Outskirts camp. Okay, so that's the big objective. I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to go that way. I don't want to do that. Hello? Oh, we're back here. Um, the ways to get up and around? Maybe? I don't want to change the party. I'm good with the party. My party's nice. So I'm going to change it. Rest. No. Well, no, we don't. Rest. We're good. Right, guys? Right. <laughs> I might need rest, though. So. Uh, it would actually probably be wise to, but, like, I like this game a lot. You know what, I think I'm gonna call a short break here, and we'll, s we'll s I'll either come back or I won't. So, we'll see which of the two ends up happening. So, yeah. This is Miles. Uh, once I can see what I'm doing, signing off for now. Later.